We can go ahead and get started with the meeting. Are we recording? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, welcome everyone. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated. I do need an approval for tonight's agenda. Or I need an, a motion for an approval for tonight's agenda. Move to approve. Oh, thank you. Second. Second. And it goes to. Ready. All right. Ready, yeah. All in no, favor I say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. I do want to remind everyone that these board meetings are business meetings that are held in public. They are not public board meetings. The board is governed by Idaho Code Title 74 and Title 33, Chapter 5, Idaho Administrative Procedures Act, or IDAPA, and we do follow the district policies. It is now time for public input. Do we have input? Just the one as far as I know. Um, Oh, okay. <clears throat> it's a public comment correction. Um, it says, good evening, Chair Thompson, Superintendent Arnold, and board members. Uh, at the July 10th, 2024 board meeting, I gave public com comment in which I attributed actions taken at Lakeland Middle School to Twin Lakes Elementary School. In my comments, I stated what happened at the school caused tension between teachers, parents, and district leadership. I'd like to apologize to Principal Melton and the staff at Twin Lakes Elementary for my error. I know an error like this could start conversation that isn't beneficial to the school, the staff, or the administration. And I'm so sorry uh, if my misspeaking caused that. And that was from Anita Dupsik. All right, no other public input? Okay, moving on to reports. We have the financial report. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion to be had on the monthly financial report? <coughs> this is the year end report? Uh, no, it's the first. It's July. The, the August report. July 31. Okay. It's the current year, um, church, or Trustee Jones. It's the current year report for the current year budget. <coughs> my, my question was going to be, uh, what, what, do we know what the ending balance was? Not at this moment. We have a handful more journal entries to prepare for the audit, um, and then we will have a final balance at that point. Um, I'm still waiting on one more piece of revenue to come into a crew. Um, on here, we have revenue in lieu of taxes. Yes. Can you explain that a little bit? Is that the offset that be, it's a it's a category that I haven't seen on the report before? Uh, it, uh, Chair Thompson, that was on the report last year. I can get you a firm definition on it. It's something that we receive once a year from Coos County. Okay, so it comes from the county. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Mm -hmm. All righty, uh, moving on to the consent agenda. We have the minutes from the previous meeting, um, 710, 718 facilities, and 724 special meeting. Um, we have the minutes of the subcommittee meetings, HR items, regular and special bills. Um, I do have one comment on the 710 regular board minutes board meeting minutes I am having a heck of a time um, item I nine the motion was uh, did not involve 
a resolution, so it's just that the motion passed. Okay, so if that can be struck. Did anyone have any other questions or comments on minutes? Oh, and I don't think it was asked by one of the trustees. I think it was either Trustee Bain. I think it was Trustee Bain. Um, to attach the public comments to the minutes. Can we do that so that when we're reviewing them, we've got the comments there as well? Okay. I have a question on the minutes from the 18th. <coughs> um, it has to do with the motion that was passed for the projects. I was not in attendance, I apologize for that. But uh, it indicates that a number of changes were made to the preliminary worksheet, and I just wonder if we can get a copy of the approved worksheet. If we can attach that to the minutes, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I was looking for it too. Yeah. <laughs> like, wait a minute. We really kind of need to make sure that we always have the details of what was approved. So whether that's a <coughs> correction to uh, to something or additions or adjustments to what was presented. Any other comments on the minutes or the subcommittee minutes? No. Nope, okay. Mean. HR items, any comments or discussions? Um, I do want to state that the stipends and supplemental contracts are follow up. That's not an action item because those have already been paid. This is just supporting documents that the board asked for. Um, with respect to stipends when we talked about it in in July. So that doesn't... It could have been dropped down to the old business. Correct. Yeah. It, it, and part of the financial follow-up. Or, mm -hmm. yeah, it would have been the financial follow-up. So we won't be taking action on that. Um, any comments on the memo or the resignations? Yeah, there was uh, one of the letters of resignation, but they didn't state what the position was. I don't know. Um, so the resignations are, you can provide the name because the names are provided in public. If you want to tell me the name, I can tell you the position. Sure, Browning. Tomia? Yeah. She was the admin assistant at Lakeland High School. Oh, okay. And then I'd also like to say you have a resignation on there uh, from a Melissa Herman. Um, she actually rescinded her resignation, but that was before it went to the board. So you'll see um, that rescinded um, on the next board meeting. And then we had another one, Terry McCune, who resigned okay. prior. She uh -huh. has also rescinded her resignation, and you'll see those at the next. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you for that. And you said she was the admin assistant at Lakeland High School. At the high school. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other discussion on the HR items? No. I think we might have the, Yeah. Out. Um, some of the para positions and the behavioral positions and all that have reopened positions to replace those people are it. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> are those considered hard to fill? I don't remember. No, but. the pair of positions actually are, we get a lot of applications okay. for those and as soon as we've posted some this week and as soon as we post them, I mean, I'm getting applications right away. Okay, all right. I yep, that was all I had for that. Okay, moving on to the regular and special fills on the bills list. I did have some questions. Um, uh, there were two large purchases um, for the video display at Lakeland. I thought that was being paid for from Spokane Teachers Credit Union. Chair Thompson, it is being paid for by Spokane Teachers. We paid for it and then we're being reimbursed for that expense. Okay. There were 
There were two bills. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> the roof repair and cleanup at LMS for Jimmy's roofing for 35000 What type of repair work needed to be done? Um, Chair Thompson, uh, our facilities director, brought that to you in March. That was the work that needed to be be done um, that was found during the siting project. Okay. Um, so that was approved uh, back in the March meeting um, and that work has been completed. Okay. We just, it seems like every month there's bills from Jimmy's, so mm -hmm. I wouldn't know that that was for work yep. done in yep. March. <laughs> um, those were my questions. Anybody else have any? Um, got the displays um, <clears throat> roof repair. Oh, the partitions for the uh, high school gym, what are those for? One Point Partners partitions for the high school, uh, Lakeland High School gym, it says. Uh, Trustee Grissom, I would have to follow up on that unless uh, uh, our principal from Lakeland High School would like to address it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it just says um, one point partners partitions for LHS gym. Oh, I can look into that for you. <clears throat> All right. And then um, I just assume that the Dell desktops and the monitors are just the regular rotate out and in. Okay. Um, and then the thinking maps curriculum. Um, and that's an annual cost, that 32000 Yes, that is what we had sought um, permission from the board to put a grant or put a request in for a digital content curriculum. We were awarded the full amount from the state, okay. um, which is actually more revenue than we typically receive from the state for a digital content curriculum. Um, so that will be fully reimbursed by the state. Okay. Um, there was something else that it That was it on that one, I believe. Um, but I did have something. Are we to the, the bill breakout? Can you address that? Yeah, go for it. <clears throat> so the Edmentum renewal, the 12545 what exactly are we using? That's our Play-Doh um, oh. agreement for Mountain View High School. OK, mm -hmm. and that's annual. And then what do, yes. what do we use exactly for Play-Doh? Um, I just. Nothing on their website. The ed, ad, admin, Edmentum <coughs> looked familiar, um, and I noticed they had done some recent updates to their corporate, we believe. So I was just curious because they included a D now in their DEI what we're actually using and what the kids have exposure to through this company. So, the, any of our Mount View students who are working from home and are online are using the Edmentum. So uh, they're using it for their ELA courses, their mm -hmm. math courses, their science <coughs> courses. Um, so can we get something to look at that? I don't remember looking at their set, especially since you say ELA, now that raises even more concern to me. Um, can we get something to log in or somewhere we can look at the actual curriculum they're being exposed to? Mm -hmm. I just it. I wasn't familiar with Plato, obviously I am, but I didn't I never remember looking at this website or, you know, it could be maybe they were bought out. I don't know, that's been happening a lot too, but um, I just didn't recognize the name and I wasn't sure what, they have quite a lengthy curriculum catalog. I wasn't sure exactly what we were using. So I can ask Mr. Uzi to um, provide for us a list of the courses that we are using and then for a login so you can go yeah, and look at those. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Um, and that, I assume, is the annual cost of 12000 mm -hmm. So you still have curriculum costs, even though we're buying curriculum. Mm -hmm. Many mm -hmm. new curriculum, right? I mean, right there, we just hit 50 grand, so, right. you know, 500000 We only get to do that, what, 10 more times we're done. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not enough money. We should have stuck with the million, but I digress. Um, 
I think that was it. <coughs> Yes. Uh, I apologize. The one point partners those partitions for the LMS gym project, I believe. Um, and I might just, uh, are those the bathroom partitions? For the middle school? Uh -huh. The restroom animation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they're the stall walls for the restroom. So at the high school? For the new. This one says LMS for one point. So um, did it get written on the list? Very possible, yeah. Yeah. All right, that's fine. As long it's as the bathroom can. partition. And I, if it was wrong on the bill list, it should have said LMS. Okay. I apologize. Okay. Um, it, it's the bathroom stall walls okay. for that bathroom remodel and that main hall and the hot hallway. Right. Okay. All righty. That makes sense. Yep. <coughs> Yeah, I was just like, why are we putting partitions in the gym? Are we <laughs> no. out of space? That's what I'm thinking. Are we no, there's classrooms. <laughs> Oh, you're fine. Yeah, that's fine. <coughs> At least we know what it is. Yeah. The bathrooms in Hawk Hall look really good. Yeah, just a comment. It all looks good. wonderful. Really gratifying to see that happening. I'm going to put that wall back. And, uh, you know. The mural is pretty close to complete over there as well. I sent them a picture to the yeah. yeah. That was super cool. The whole, the whole place is like they need a grand reopening. <laughs> like, it's awesome over there. They do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'll look better when we get that floor and the bleachers done as well. But. Yeah. Yeah, it looks great. Um, I think that, that was all I had. I have uh, one question, a little bit awkward. Can you uh, enlighten us on why we've spent over $12,000 to have septic tanks pumped? Oh, yeah, I saw that too. I thought, wow, what are they charging us? Yeah. I can defer to our facilities director, um, Mike Ferriola, on that, because uh, he coordinated those services. Yeah, so we, um, please introduce yourself. Oh, Mike Curry, old facility director. We um, have been on a annual regimen with uh, Apple and with Garwood to eliminate any problems with the systems because they're aged. So I got on that program probably seven years ago as a means to be preventative. That's why, I, that's why. I, so that's an annual expense? Yeah. Yeah, and the price has gone up, I mean, a little bit, you know, from year to year, I imagine. I'd have to look back through and see how much it's gone up, but, you, you know, know Garwood's you know pretty... You know what the gallonage is that they take out? The, what's that? You know what the gallonage is that they take out? Um, Garwood's up there because Garwood's got, it's, it's big. I want to say it's somewhere probably in the 15,000 range, oh. uh, roughly. Um, Apple's a little bit less than that, but Apple's got the two, the front and the back. Um, combined, I, I, maybe twelve thousand. I'd have to go back and, and verify Price that. Price just seems awfully high. I yeah. Mean, have you have you checked uh, with other? I have not. So we we use Drains Plus. They're right there, right by Garwood. Um, <coughs> and uh, we could. I mean, I could shop around and see. They're close. Uh, so I figured, you know, the trucking and whatnot would be cheaper, a quicker response and cheaper from that location. But we could certainly look at like, you know, Rooter guys or somebody else. Uh, and, and get another another estimate for next year. You said Drains Plus? Mm-hmm. Because this is from Little Stinker. It's the same. Drains okay. Plus is their commercial side. Okay. Little Stinker is their uh, residential side. So, okay. the same. it's the same building. It's the same company. That's probably about right. But yeah, we could get quotes. I mean, if they're hauling away that many gallons, that's mm -hmm. about 100 bucks. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I know it's not a large dollar amount, but we pay the coordinating chamber membership. We do because we had between our two high schools last year probably 15 to 20 students who received scholarships through the coordinating chamber. Um, and Sebasto, Sebastian Kelly is the one who created, who built that relationship to allow our students to have an opportunity to um, apply for those. We pay them to apply for scholarships. We we are part of their their chamber, which gives our kids access to. Yeah, their scholarships are only open to members, okay. so therefore we have a membership, so our students can take of membership benefits. And if there's that many students, we're 
getting more than three hundred and twenty nine dollars worth of scholarships, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Exactly. Yeah, each one was a thousand dollars. So um, and then in addition to that, they include any of our new teachers, and they do a, a really nice <coughs> new teacher kind of banquet to welcome people to the area if they're new, and uh, our teachers get to participate in that as well. Any other conversation, discussion, or questions on the those list? Um, I'll entertain a motion on the consent agenda. Move to, a, move to approve the consent agenda. agenda. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Moving on to old business, we have a superintendent follow up. Um, so it looks like with iCrimp. Um, but if there is any, because you had asked about that, Randy, mm -hmm. if there is any um, notaries, well, the notaries are covered by ICRAMP, but also if there is a, what is it called, a distribution, um, rebate. Yes, rebate. Yes. yes, we would receive it even though we're not members of ISBA. It's not, a, it's not an <laughs> ISBA benefit, it's what insurance companies do. Have you had a chance to look at the community page on the district website? No. Uh, <coughs> it's definitely, uh, we're building it, but there is a tab right there at the top with all the main tabs that specifically says community. And so uh, we're, we're creating that so that um, there are, their financial documents are there for them to easily find. And um, when we put out the application for community members to participate in uh, board subcommittees, it will be on the community page. So okay. just trying to make the website more user friendly to people who aren't uh, directly attached to the district. <coughs> That's great. Dividends, that is the word. Mm -hmm. um, any comments or questions or conversation on the superintendent follow up information for that? Not for me. Nope. Um, okay. Trustee Grissom, is there anything, you had specifically asked me to find out some information uh, from Kathy Thomas at Athol Elementary related to uh, playground because the board had approved the, the um, Yeah, that dollars. was facilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I read through all that. Um, is there any additional information you're looking for or, or uh, direction for us? <coughs> Uh, not off the top of my head because it sounds like they pretty much they're going to need help in here, in right? Yeah. So it, it's all. I just wanted to make sure that we were being fair. That you know, if one was putting in that we, you know, but it sounds like we're we'll have that opportunity here within the next couple of years. So um, that sounds fine. It does sound like they have um, some other projects slated, anyways. But yeah, and also that they also understand that the inquiry wasn't about having them pay for something. It was to make sure that because the district was doing for one elementary that, you know, they didn't feel slighted. Yes. Because yes. It, it didn't, the district didn't do anything for them for their playground, you know, because they did say in here that they wanted to use the money. Well, that wasn't the point of the inquiry was to make them spend the money a certain way. No, and, and that wasn't how I asked the question. I just, I, um, I did follow up with Mr. Massey mm -hmm. because um, previously their PTU had raised money and then mm -hmm. they were told right. they couldn't use it. Yes. And so his response to me was, um, we really appreciate what the board has given us and, and if the board is okay, we would actually rather use this money that we raised for Playground now because the board's helping us with this, with this other project. So. Um, that's that's what yeah whatever plans. they yeah whatever seems fair to them I just wanted to make sure everybody would one didn't feel more slighted than the other you know that was that was my concern yeah. so they all everybody seems to have a direction and they all seem to feel fine so I'm good with that okay good and then the last item on there is uh, um, 
the board had asked me to put together a protocol that for activities that require pre-approval by the board so if there's any feedback that is there um, and if you feel like I missed something um, I'm happy to add that I thought it looked great yeah it looks yeah good. Thank you for that. Sort of puts everybody <coughs> on the same page and mm -hmm. streamlines it. Yeah, it's, it's perfect. Everybody knows what's expected. Right, yeah. Any other questions or discussion on the superintendent follow up? Okay, moving on to the financial follow up. Um, spreadsheet where you show both uh, FY24 and FY25 projects, uh, proposed budget for 25. That list, that laundry list, are, for the record, are those all approved projects? Yes. By the board? From the fiscal on Okay. Uh, I, my second question has to do with concrete. We're looking at spending about a half million dollars for concrete work. Uh, number one, how did we establish that amount of money? Uh, and uh, we're currently out for bid on that, is that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, what information was provided to the bidders to establish how they would provide the bid? We're publishing an addendum to that bid process tomorrow. Um, when it was originally posted, we had a mandatory, mandatory site walkthrough. That was a little bit difficult um, to ensure that we had um, comparable bids. So uh, mm -hmm. Director of Facilities, Mike Ferriola, uh, went through and did the square footage. So we'll be posting the square footage so that all of the bids are the same. And, and the, is the square footage all for flat work or is any of it for curb? I would have to defer to our Director of Facilities. It's got curb in the sidewalk. Mike Ferriola, Facilities Director. Um, it is just flat work. Okay. Curbing uh, okay. is something that I would do um, in conjunction with like a parking lot uh, replacement probably. Um, some of the curbing is, is pretty bad, but so is the parking lot. So I would do that step with parking lot asphalt replacement. Unless you have a sidewalk adjacent to it? Uh, yeah. I mean, normally you wouldn't pour a sidewalk and then come back and later and try to pour a curb next to it. Correct, correct. So the that's a good that's a good question. So curbing would have to be the numbers that we came up with are over the flat work if that makes sense. So there's a little bit built in for areas of curbing that will be need to be replaced. Not all of it's gonna need to be replaced though. Okay. So we kind of built in in a sense, some extra square footage for that per the site. Okay. So, the the square footage that you came up with, mm -hmm. uh, did you do the math on that to see whether it falls within budget? So uh, I did not. So what I did was when I came to the board in December with that lump sum total, uh, that was square footage numbers from a contractor that came out and looked at the entire district. And so I went and verified those numbers, but I did not because I don't know what the price per square foot is going for right now. So I did not go and see where it's just under 50,000 square feet total of what we're looking to have done, but I don't know. I don't know where that's going to put us. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a shot at somewhere in the 425, 450 range if I had to guess. Um, and that's just from just talking with some of the guys that came out and looking at what, what they're seeing seemed like a reasonable target. Uh, based on that, so, but I don't know. I don't understand how concrete projects became asphalt parking lot projects. They did not. They're not, they're not, they're not okay. No. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I was trying to explain okay. that curbing is more uh, important to the asphalt work than it is to the other concrete. Yeah, like for instance, Spirit Lake Elementary, their parking lot, you know, when you pull in their parking lot on the extreme left, going towards the library, mm -hmm. there's a curb that runs along there. And that curb is kind of sketchy because of years of plowing. That curb is something I would take care of when the parking lot gets redone. That is a parking lot that needs to be completely tore out and redone. 
that scenario right there is an example of, of me leaving the curbing for right now and dealing with it at a later date with another project. Okay. So, my next question, Mike, is um, you know, in going around the district, there are a number of areas that you know need serious replacement of concrete work. But mm -hmm. what I'm wondering is, uh, in the total square footage that you put together as mm -hmm. a package, are we taking out concrete? that is still in good shape just because it's adjacent to, or are we just replacing the broken up side? Correct, we're just replacing uh, concrete that's been compromised. So major cracking, lifting, heaving, right. areas we've had in the years had to go and shave and bevel. Right. Um, any areas that have heavy duty pock marks in them from years of using the wrong kind of so, ice melt, let's yeah, say. Yeah. But there are sections at these six sites that we're getting bids on that are completely sound. And I didn't see any, any reason to disrupt that. Good. I mean, you're basically just kind of, at that point, just throwing money around, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm focusing on, on structural integrity uh, areas of these sites. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, how, the, how did Twin Lakes get done before stuff that's a liability to the district get done? Twin Lakes and what, what got the done? The playground. Play that, that's the preschool. We had we had to put a preschool uh, structure in there for the preschool program. He's talking about the concrete. The concrete, though. The oh, concrete. the concrete was for ADA. I was asked to put ADA access, additional ADA ADA access, uh, in that parking lot that we did not have. So that required but it cutting. Looked like concrete. It looked like it was by the. It looked like it was by the playground. There is. That was part. Yeah, part. It was a two-part project. There was the ADA side of it, and then part of it was the uh, pad poured in there, in as far as for the playground. Portion of the job. I, was, I don't yeah. understand why we've been asking for concrete for liability purposes, and then this gets done ahead of everything else. So I, I can't. I don't know. I mean, I I, I, I manage in, in whatever comes to me. And I don't know. I don't know why. I mean, it was a playground project. It wasn't part of uh, the concrete sidewalk project. That's not the need for the playgrounds and the. ADA sidewalk improvements came out of our um, building funds, essentially, <coughs> that were allocated at the plant facility levy. They weren't charged to the concrete project. I, I do have one other question on, on concrete. You mentioned the, <coughs> you sent out an addendum. Are there, uh, do, you, do you have any written specifications that you've given to the bidders for this concrete work? Other That's, than the square footage? Other than the square no. footage. So we don't know whether we're getting three inches or four inches or uh, well, other than me verbally talking with the guys when they came out, and I wanted four. But I can put so. that in the addendum that I'm posting tomorrow. Are, are we going to have a written contract with, for that work? Yes. Um, the way that the RFP is structured, uh, I've requested that they break it out by project, um, so by location. So if for some reason it goes over the budget that we have in place, <coughs> we can have a conversation of which projects are the priority. Or if we want to move some funds around, which is at the board's discretion um, for the other approved projects, we can do that as well. Um, but I did ask for it to be broken out. The addendum will be posted, like I said, tomorrow, and I will make sure to include that we would like four inch, um, four inches of concrete. Yeah, I want four inch. Uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, concrete sometimes is only as good as what's underneath it. Right. And so uh, you might want to think about that a little bit. Them guaranteeing compaction, for example, because if they tear a piece of concrete work out, they disturb all the soil mm -hmm. underneath it, then you don't have compaction. <coughs> right. So if you go put that back, it needs to be compacted right. to 95%, if they can, can reset it. I, I would just suggest you put it in there as they guarantee that, uh, and, then they have to, and then they have to warranty it'll work, and if it fails within a year, they come back and review it. Yeah, makes sense. Well, and if it's heaving anywhere, then what's underneath of it is no good anyway, so there's no way they can guarantee that. And my concern is if we're tearing out middle sections, I mean, I think we need to be pretty darn specific on what we want because they're going to have to drill the other then and put in rebar to adhere it there, or sometimes better just to tear the whole thing out and replace it mm -hmm. instead of trying to just two little pieces here and there. That's not very good either. Well, majority of the sites that we're looking at, I mean, um, there are there are sections that are, are solid, but for the most part, a lot of it's gonna be 
tear out. Taken out. Yes, it has to be. I mean, um, I can't. One hundred percent of it's not going to obviously, but a vast majority of it's going to have to be dealt with. So um, the idea that we're going to do, you know, a little eight foot section like this, and then go, you know, thirty feet and do another one. Yeah. And, and, not going to yeah. be the case, and that's how the, that's how the square footage numbers were based on actual by site on what needed to come out for safety and integrity. Yeah. So yeah. All right. Yeah. In your walkabout with all these contractors, um, mm -hmm. understanding that we're not going to get information until September, when do they anticipate being able to do the projects and get them complete? So the issue would be. Um, yeah, I mean, you couldn't do it during school because of the uh, inconvenience and what would have to be blocked off. Uh, the contractors that have come out and looked at it so far uh, didn't give me any indication they could do anything before uh, summertime, essentially. So, so I mean, you're literally talking about having to close, I don't know how you would get in and out of the building with what they have to tear out as far as routing kids and staff and all that. And then you got the liability part of that business too about being in a construction zone essentially and the disruption that it would cause so um, so they're going to bid now for concrete pricing that they're going to guarantee next summer I, well, I would I would think they would have to at this point because it's going to be so far out uh, they were aware I mean like I said the guys that came out which was three all, all three contractors said there's no way we could get to it until then so um, I'm I guess we could ask that question I don't know if they're building that into it or not, but it would because probably be a good question like to ask. This, right, right. Because it's yep. kind of pointless if we're getting bids now that they're not going to do until next year and mm -hmm. then have to come back and rebid right. again. Right. And face this uh, obstacle again. Mm -hmm. Part of the challenges we do need to get on their books, um, which is why we're doing this process right now, um, unfortunately. Even Should have gone down two years ago when we asked. I was not here two years ago. I'm not blaming you. We've asked. Yeah, maybe just uh, make sure if you're in a contract if they guarantee your bid price. Uh, I will put that in the event though. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Anything else on the financial follow-up? No, but can you give us a copy of what you're actually running? It's on the website that I Oh, is it? okay, that's there. fine. Yep, as long as it's there. So I'm just <coughs> curious how it's worded, what we're asking for. When those bids come back, could we please have like, a list of the, because you're, you're asking the contractors to have the, the project split out. Mm -hmm. Can we get yes, pictures as, as of the of current status of what each of those projects entails. Okay, um, I, I, have, we can I, have have, that. I have one more question. Manus told us they're going to start pouring small sections of concrete to fix it. They could get the small dump truck and start pouring concrete. Has any of that been done? Uh, again, I would have to defer to the director of facilities. No, we have not done any in-house concrete work. But you said you were going to. I said we were going to? Yeah. I don't recall. You stood up that. right there and, yep, you did. I probably said it, it could be done, but it wasn't anything that was set in stone. <clears throat> I mean, we got jagged concrete at the football field. I took a hammer to it the other day just to fix it because it was going to cut somebody open. It was as sharp as a knife. It's unacceptable. I hear you. We're making steps to remedy no, We're not it. making steps. We got leaks everywhere, our, our vegetation's overgrowing everywhere, nothing's getting done, admin's out there freaking fixing fields and fixing everything, and nobody's helping them. It's crap. Well, I, I'd have to disagree with you on that one. The, be well, weed, I got weed, some weed, video of the AD weed. weed eating. Is that cool? That's well, not cool. But, but you need to have the whole picture. They have a position over there. Okay, Mr. Ferriero, right. we're going, that, we're totally off topic here. Okay. So well, we're just going to move on from the financial follow up onto the facilities update. Um, we can address the concrete uh, later. All right. Um,
So you're stating that there's no plumbing issue at Garwood in your follow-up? Correct. Okay. I'm not sure who brought that out, but there was a plumbing issue. I think Trustee Grissom mentioned it in a in the workshop about something that was said maybe a while ago. Okay. Um, so I followed up with Mr. Massey and he wasn't aware of any issue other than normal stuff that happens at the schools. Yeah, I did bring it up because that's what we were told. That they, okay. That they, that Garwood and Apple, but mainly Garwood had really bad plumbing issues, but I didn't know, we didn't know what that was. Right. But now <clears throat> nobody knows, so we don't have any. Right. <laughs> other than <laughs> amazing how sometimes that works. things that shouldn't be flushed out. Right. Really get it flushed right. Out. Yeah. Yeah, those kids things. are weird. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments on the facilities? No. No. So in essence, we don't have a plumbing issue. That was that was the whole thing. Correct. Yeah. All right. So we're going to move on to new business. Um, I would like to. Thank you, Mr. Ferriero. You're welcome. I'd like to jump down to. We're going to do this out of order. I don't want everyone to have to be here until we're done. Um, THS Fieldhouse, I think, is the first one with staff. Oh, and it's Jessica. All right. You just get to see me a whole bunch. Um, so we solicited bids for the THS build house for a construction manager, general contractor. Um, we received, apologies, I don't have it pulled up just yet. We received several bids. Um, the committee went through and reviewed all of the submissions and have made the recommendation to move forward with core construction. Who was part of the committee? The committee was uh, Ryan uh, Everlin, our principal at Duberly High School, um, Director of Facilities Mike Ferriola, myself, and Chelsea Persley. Can you explain a little bit the uh, rating system that you use? I, I saw the chart at the end, but I don't know if I'm interpreting it. sitting on donations? Uh, no, we just had it in the 
a little over 350,000 in monetary donations, and then we have uh, several donations for services and um, actual materials. I don't have a value for that at the moment because until we do a bid process, I can't necessarily put a dollar amount to the value of those um, offered donations. And that'll be important too that the Whoever does the project knows that some of the materials are already being provided. That was in the RFQ, um, the request for qualifications for this. Uh, it was in, listed in there what services and things had already been offered as a donation. Um, there's just not a dollar amount associated with it. So we didn't put company names with that until we actually chose a vendor for it. Just uh, one other comment, um, and I mean no disrespect to you or the process. <clears throat> I happen to, to have done a lot of work with general construction during the time that I was superintendent. Even in their literature, they named us several of the projects that they've done for the school district over the years. They were, uh, I found them to be exceedingly easy to work with. They're very responsive to needed changes and things like that. Uh, so, you know, it, just on the surface of it, if I were looking at those four companies, I would probably have chosen them. But uh, I understand your system. Any further discussion on the THS? Um, what's up? So I will entertain a motion regarding the uh, award denial or the award, the denial or the approval of um, the contractor for the THS Fields House. to go with core construction. Do we need to have more conversation? Did Core beat the note? What was the deciding factor? The score. Hmm. If you go to the very last page. Right. Um, I'm actually just a little shocked because we didn't receive these scores. Um, at least I don't recall. Um, with the John Brown thing, and it was important that we go with Emmerich because it was easier they were um, for the rela yeah right the district. relationship right. And now we're not right. The <coughs> Emmerich scored one ten point five, and Core scored one eleven point two five, so they were point seven five more in points. Humans? Yes. Do we know um, why? Um, but here's my concern with looking at these scores mm -hmm. is if we looked at it, I mean, our current people, Emmerich, mm -hmm. seem to score quite low on project approach, budget control, schedule, office support, I mean, 
why would they score so low if we haven't heard any concern about them? I haven't. I mean, did I miss something that we heard concerns about them? During the course of this RFQ, we have to take what is presented um, and in order to be fair across the board. So sure. it was based on the materials provided. Right, no, I understand that, but my I have a concern because they've done all these projects in our district and now there's these scores that are barely a 50% of, if the max points is 20, 20, and we're getting 12, 9, 9, 12, 12. I mean, to me, that is an issue. What what created such a low score? That was one evaluator's scores. Which obviously, I mean, it's still in effect. Um, I, I'm just curious why and what it was and um, well, in all fairness, though, that evaluator's score for EMREC was higher than it was for CORE. Right. Um, but CORE hasn't been working in our, in our district like EMREC has for every, I'm just concerned over the... CORE yeah. has worked in the past here. Right. But not recently. Right. They are currently doing the Oregon Police Department. Um, yeah, I'm just, I was just curious because we <coughs> had a similar discussion, like, Chair Thompson was saying about the other projects and we just sort of, because it was in the same realm, went with IMRIC. It was just an extension basically of what they're doing and now right. we're going with somebody else. I was just, and then to look at the scores, I was just curious um, because then E4, uh, all right. I mean, I guess it also had to do a lot, do a lot to do with the people that were evaluating, yeah. not being the same group of people that did the the decision making on the other project, that would be my guess. Yeah, you have different evaluators. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So whoever E three was was at least consistent in the way they is the right. outlier yeah. in yeah. all of all them. Yeah. Of them. Yeah. 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 Well, I hope whatever their concern was that they've wasted it to somebody that matters. Because I still am concerned about the we scores had, they gave. You know. Lengthy okay. discussion. Okay. Trustee Jones, what were your comments that you just said a few minutes ago about the scoring process and um, Oh I I have no I have no problem <clears throat> you know with the scoring process. It's just I, I happen to uh, know, uh, you know, some of the principals in general, and I and I worked with them on numerous significant projects in the past, mm -hmm. and, and found them a great company to work with. Now it's been a few years ago; there could have been some change in personnel, obviously. But, in Gino, uh, or why, why they Gino. you know were rated the way they were, I have no idea. Yeah, I, I okay. think I was just for. curious. It's yeah. your personal input that you gave, yeah. I didn't quite yeah. hear it all. Okay, Trustee Jones, I didn't catch that you were speaking. About Geno, I think one of the concerns from the committee is their presentation felt very um, last minute and it didn't technically cover everything we were asking for. So I think that's what reflected in the scores. Probably because they're so busy. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They do a lot of projects, both it's commercial and other I completely here, understand that. Mm -hmm. They are local. That's one more point in our favor, in my view. But. <clears throat> Yep, and Emric does have offices in Sandpoint, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And then where where was Core? Are they out of Oregon? Boise. They're yeah. out of Boise, Boise. but okay. they are working up here, um, and I believe they have a base in uh, Spokane as well. So where are the people that on the project? Are they local? Or are they a crew from Boise, or where do these people come from that we'll be employing? Happy to follow up on that for you. Yeah. And when do we have to have this? We have to have this tonight. I guess it's an action item for action tonight action. because we have to have it tonight, or can it be tabled until we get some questions answered? It pushes back project timeline. We can't start bidding any of this process until we pick someone. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why. I would like to have it approved tonight, but I sure. completely understand the want for more information. If you would like, um, we could potentially ask for um, some interviews directly with, I, I did call some of the references for all of the companies. Um, I will say one of the things 
for me personally that led to cores. They had more recent references um, versus some of the other entities that were on here. Um, at your discretion. Yeah. Okay. Those names. Wait, Nobody else is here to the yeah. right. 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 In the district right now. Right. <laughs> Right. There's Have no there been problems with Emmerich? Uh, not problems with Emmerich. I, I personally, I'm having a little bit of a challenge. They're having us uh, do some stuff with their payments lately that have been a little cumbersome. Um, and so uh, a little, when are you paying us um, attitude, which has never happened in the past. Um, we pay on time as soon as we receive the invoices within our AP schedule. But um, they actually have us overnighting checks to them at this point. That, that's good information. Yeah. I think Mr. Everlin is hoping that we can break ground in the spring. Um, so we just want to make sure that we have everything kind of lined up and ready to go so that as soon as the weather is favorable we can get going on it because he's got people who are donating a lot of money and they have kids at Tim Lake High School and they would like to see their kids be able to utilize this sure. um, this building so didn't Core come and give a presentation to us when we when they were one that was with Emmer right when we started yeah. this yeah all these processes yeah right and, <coughs> the and I don't recall what the process was at that time. Or who the well, the final was. decision was our. They came and spoke directly to us and mm -hmm. gave the board the information. Okay. Yeah, I remember them making presentations. We could, um, we could ask the, the the top two to do that again to to um, present to the board and give you information if that's what you're looking for. Be able to ask, ask some questions um, and then make a decision could reach out and ask them to do that. If you feel like you have questions that you want to answer before we make a decision. Well, I mean, I guess if the committee, you know, this is their recommendation, um, I don't know, it just seems odd to me. It just doesn't sit right with me and I don't know, you know, we know, Emmerich's going to be local people. We know Gino's going to be local people. We know Gino's history. We know Emmerich's history. I mean, Emmerich is current. Um, Again, the, the challenging part of this is we have to go on the materials that they present when we're making our evaluations. As far as the bid. Right, but we don't have that information. We don't know why. It's we, all. Oh, why you know everything I mean? yeah, was torn away? No, yeah, you know. All right, that's fine. I'm. I mean, we can just. It's just a pole bar. Yeah. I mean, I hope. Way to downplay huh? it. I don't know what I'm saying. Basically. Well, it's more than a pole barn. You're taking local money. I know. And we're employing people from where Boise. I, I believe. Instead I of our. Don't want to speak out of turn, but I believe they will have a local crew because they yeah. are working in quarterly currently. So. I know, but where did that crew come from? Are they our people? I mean, we're going to take our, uh, most of it was donated money or whatever, but I just. Keep it local. Yeah. Anyways. I, I would agree with that. You know, that, that's point pretty well taken. You know, there's a lot of donated money that's coming uh -huh. into this, this project from local people, local business people, so. The effort to kind of maintain that locally, I think, is important. And Ryan and his crew have done a phenomenal job with rallying Doing their troops. Yes. Yeah. Right. And I don't want someone that's just going to mow over yeah. everything they. There's a lot of respect they, to those folks exactly. who made those donations. Right. You know, to, to okay. I will well, that's why it was considered in this. That's why that information was given to all of these companies and they that was part of the consideration. Yeah. So is there more conversation we need to have? Okay. 
Okay, we do have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? What was the motion? The motion was to approve the recommendation, um, the committee's recommendation to award the contract to core construction. I think I had some more. But that's what our motion was for. I'll second for purposes of framing it for the vote. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. 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 Did you go for it or I don't have to. Did, did you? <laughs> Are you voting yes or no, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> you have to pass the phone. I second it, yes. Oh, you did second yes. Okay. All right. So two and I just I couldn't hear you and I we were in a straight plane. I can't really see I didn't you. Say <laughs> I was gonna say. All right. So then uh, I guess two yeses, three noes, the motion fails. Is there another motion that would like to be brought forward? I, I would like to know, I respect the recommendation of CORE, but I want to know who's working for CORE. You know, like where do the people reside? Are we putting local money given back into local households or are we paying people from? At the board's discretion, would you prefer I ask both of the top two companies to come provide a brief presentation? Yeah, that good. That would be great. Can we do a special meeting for that so we can continue All to right. move forward on this? <laughs> Well, we do have two special meetings coming up. One is actually tomorrow night, and then the other one is, I believe, the 28th, and there shall be conversation on moving that date. Do they think they would be able to accommodate I that meeting? I can reach out to both of them. Okay, perfect. So then, would we like to table um, this item? Move to table. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Hearing none, the motion carried. All right, so then I want to go down to um, hey, the oh, I up on anything. It might be helpful to us if there's any more uh, information that was relied upon to make the decision that the committee made. It would be helpful if we had that too, or if this was the that, oh, was, that was it. Mm -hmm. uh, the LHS Field House. We have an LHS Field House proposal. Are you coming to speak to us? I don't know if you are or not. I definitely can. Well, you don't have to. I just. <laughs> Jimmy Hoffman, principal, Lakeland High School. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hello. I uh, I submitted a proposal for for the same thing. Uh, Ryan and I have been talking about this for quite some time, um, but specifically a couple years ago, um, you know, we we were uh, brought to. Um, the conclusion that we need more space and a lot of it is from our youth programs are, are growing our uh, high school programs are growing and uh, so we come up with what would the idea look like to get a field house and I don't even know if field house is actually a a, um, a good name to call it I, I think you know a multi-purpose uh, building that can suit a lot of different needs um, so we are proposing um, a, a big building okay. to be on the east side of our uh, our building, our high school, in the on the east side there. If you ever go through our staff parking lot, there's a an island of just grass and trees, and it's not being used for anything. Um, and we were thinking a very easy look, uh, 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 spot to put that building would be right there, uh, with easy access for power and water. Um, but also easy access for our kids, and so. Um, so the staff parking lots, the parking lot by Super One, correct? Yes, ma'am. So over in that corner where there's. It's like an island. It's an island. Right, right in the middle of the parking lot. Yeah. Oh, in the middle of the parking it's lot. All trees. Okay, that's an interesting choice. And we we've tossed <laughs> we've tossed we've tossed a lot of different we've tossed a lot of different uh, uh, spots on our on our campus around. Um, a lot of things uh, that went into that. We had some places down by our, you know, the tennis courts or the football fields. Then we were thinking in the winter access where we would actually need this the most. You know, kids would have to be, we'd have to make sure that that's plowed all the way down there. We'd have to have road access and, and all of that. We just see cost going up. 
And since this is going to be zero cost to our district, we thought we need to make sure that we try to do this for the amount that we can raise. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking for the cheapest excavation costs that we can possibly, uh, you know, afford to, to make sure that, you know, we're not taking away lots and lots of dirt and all the price of that goes up. But uh, the, the biggest reason for, for this is, is, you know, our gym space uh, mm -hmm. is, a, is a big problem in the winter. Um, and so I, in this building, we would, have, we would like a full-size basketball court. We are moving at a much slower rate than Timberlake because we really want to narrow down what is it that we want this building to be able to hold and what, what do we want to be able to tailor it to. But uh, a full-size basketball court will, would be in this uh, facility along with open field turf. Um, so you can do lots of different activities from you know, football to cheerleading to um, baseball and softball. There'll be batting cages um, along the each, each side with uh, also a golf simulator. I think we can almost, every kid in our high school could probably use this at, at some point, along with uh, the youth uh, programs in our community. Um, very gracious people that I've talked to and uh, relying on the, the relationships I have in this community and everybody is willing to help. Um, uh, one of my best friends that I graduated with uh, from Timberlake kind of started the whole process with a very generous pledge and we've been able to go around to other, build, uh, other companies and ask if they would match and uh, it's been eye-opening to see the amount of people that are willing to say we'd love to help. That's great. Yeah. Tonight they're just looking for permission from the board to, to move forward. start the process. All right. Does anybody have any questions? Um, or do we need to have any discussion? Go ahead. A couple of comments. Already? My first comment applies not only to this project, but the one at Timberlake as well. In the final analysis, I would not vote to approve a contract to build a building that's not compatible architecturally with the school where it sits. So just kind of keep that in mind. Say that again, Mr. Jones. I, I won't vote to approve a contract to build a building that is not architecturally compatible with the school where it's located. Mm -hmm. uh, different architecture at Timberlake than there is down here. Right. But I don't see building a hay barn as being compatible with the architecture of Rankin High School. Okay. I'm just telling you that right up front. Sure. Is that because of the flat roof? All I'm saying is architecturally it needs to be compatible. Okay. Aesthetically, mainly. Yeah, and that's part of it. Yeah. The other thing is, I'm not real sold on your location. Okay. I might be able to be convinced, but I'm not at this point. Sure. Those are my comments. Okay. In all honesty, I thought it was the grassy section over on the student side of the parking lot, over by the, <laughs> I thought it was on that far end. I was all lost. Mm -hmm. But I'm directionally challenged, so, you know. Yeah. Thank you for that. Of course. Any further comments or questions? Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Then I'll take a motion on the LHS field test. Move to approve. No, yeah, I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Um, the LHS cross country campout. Um, we'll go ahead and go to that one as well. Because I see them here. <laughs> um, um, Chair Thompson, they, um, I think they would like to be able to uh, address the board with. Um, they saw my recommendation and, and had some questions about okay. the um, requirement for transportation, and so okay. they wanted to be able to provide you some information as you make a consideration. Okay. Come on forward. I have 
Shannon Hall, and Shannon Matilla, Lakeland High School Cross Country Coaches. Um, one of the things that um, Ms. Sexton told us is that you would like to do bus transportation out. Um, we have a couple concerns about that. Number one, with us camping, we have to get all our camping gear out there. Um, very difficult to have all of that on a school bus. Um, and there, we bring things like barbecues to make food because we provide foods for out, with while we're out there and the kids just end up bringing a lot of things uh, with sleeping bags and things along those lines. So we're a little concerned about just physically getting all of the stuff to the campsite. And then the second thing is Farragut's a huge state park and we stay on the north side of the park off of the Thimbleberry Group, so which is really great for our running trails. That's really mm -hmm. close. But we also go play disc golf and that's like three and a half miles away. And so like while we're at the camp, so that we're not just stuck in a field, we go have a disc golf tournament and then we also go down and we do do some swimming. Um, that would make it very difficult to not have any vehicles out there to get kids to those other locations. About how many students go? We have, we're going to have about 24 kids on the team, but this is an optional camp out. And so my guess will have probably 16 to 18 of our students going. Athletes. We also have another issue that we didn't think of when we booked it. It's actually fair week. Oh. And so we also have many kids that are involved in 4-H and those students will be transporting themselves out so that they can participate in the runs. So they'll come run with us and then they won't maybe stay for all the activity. They'll have to go back and show pig and then they'll come back and join us for an evening run. Um, and so we have, do have some kids that are going to be self And These are optional. There's no requirement for any kid to attend this camp. It's, it's, it's an opportunity for them to run the trails that we're going to be competing at. One of our meets during the regular season as well as the district meet, which mm -hmm. determines if we go to state or not. And because um, of where we're located, where Lakeland High School is located, um, we pretty much were half the run on the asphalt all the time. And so getting out to trails, uh, as much as we can at least, is really helpful. And also experiencing the courses ahead of time, especially for our district meet, mm -hmm. is really important. And it's a great opportunity to be able to do it in the summer when you get out there and be with her. Um, do you understand why we need to have bus transportation for district-sponsored events? We do, but we also know that there are some things that we don't have bus transportation to that kids self-transport. Um, we know like swim kids drive themselves to practice every single day uh, into the Croc Center, and so we know that there are some exceptions that have to be made just logistically that sometimes busing doesn't always work. Okay. Um, and so we do, we have a uh, very, we are using the permission slip that you guys approved and it's very thorough. We are making sure that in that, it, we are very clear that um, the students will be um, riding out and they have the choice, the parents can say, my student can ride only with a coach, my student may ride with another student or I'll be bringing my student out myself. So they get to choose which option would be best for their family. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in past years, that's always, we've always been able to have that work. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? So I, um, well, I, you know, I think I need a little bit of clarification. So what I'm hearing is because of the more recent legal advice that we got, because of every, that's why all this is changing. Right. Okay. All right. And, and then, even though in the past we've done things a certain way, we just can't do that anymore. Um, especially with some of the tragedies down south with the kids in the water. Um, okay. So, two, I heard two concerns, I think, uh, about the bus transportation thing. One is uh, getting your stuff out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a way around that, I think. But at any rate, and the other is. Uh, you got some travel that takes place while you're out there. Great. So, if we had a bus on site, would that satisfy that transportation problem? It would. It would be very expensive, on the other hand. But yes. Yeah. Okay. The other thing is, uh, you know, in, in terms of getting your stuff out there, obviously, if you do it the way you did it in the old days, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, you and parents or others transported stuff out there. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So there's a certain amount of stuff that kids can take on the bus, obviously. They're in their bedroll, personal items, and so forth. In terms of barbecues and that kind of stuff. You're going to need somebody with a pickup or a trailer or something to take that stuff out, mm -hmm. you know. So my my thought is, uh, you know, if you've had parents and others that have helped with that in the past, maybe they could help with that aspect of it now, so you don't have to p worry about putting that on the bus. You know, some of those parents could bring that stuff out for you mm -hmm. and bring it home at the time. Yeah. Just a thought. We're we're trying to. No, I told you. No, we and then as far as the kids transporting, like they're saying, fair week, and the I mean, right. well, there was no problem with that, was there? I mean, or did they want us, or was the, was the more of an advice, I mean, I'm calling it advice, but in this instance it was more of an advice, if, if the students went by bus, yeah, they, I remember now, they can go back and forth. Well, if, they, if they're showing a fair even just driving to Lake One High School, they're driving themselves. Right. But they're going to school, they're not, it's not a school-sponsored event, and that's where the, um... Point of liability falls out. Yeah, in. yeah, because it's school-sponsored. Right. <clears throat> District-sponsored, whatever you want to call it. Um... Did we allow, I can't remember, um, we did not, no, student transportation? We, we Timberlake, Timber yeah. Yeah. yeah, when we, when Timberlake, and that's what I shared with the, right. uh, our two lovely Shannons, is that when, when the Timberlake trip came, we allowed them to do the trip, but they couldn't self-transport. Right. My own children, on the other hand, self-transported to stu student council retreat for Lakeland High School. Yeah. Um, Is there a waiver? We we'll need to talk about that one. No. <laughs> right. No waiver. That one I didn't. Yeah, we didn't know about until after this. So. <coughs> well, it's a liability. <coughs> I know. Well, you can. They turn around in school to sue the district. Even That's if you have a, thing. even if you sign it off. Yeah, because there's, there's always a loophole. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, our attorneys have There's good they can sign a release of liability, but they, right. it doesn't keep them from coming back and suing, and it doesn't keep them from winning. Yeah, it really doesn't mean anything except that, you know, you need it. And unfortunately, that's where we are in this day and age, which is ridiculous. So what happens if, like, students just show up at Farragut to see their friends on cross-country, and then they even come back later? I mean, can they have outside visitors? Oh, yeah, it, that, nobody showed, there were no students showed up. It was just our group. Uh, that's, yes. they would but what I'm saying is, um, Students that are visiting the from the fair. There's <laughs> no <laughs> way around it. Yeah. What you're asking. I mean, what, what, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, how do you do that? I mean, we can't stop people from, and it's fair, you know. All right. Well, so we have a bus, we send a bus, we leave the bus. Well, I think that can be worked out. I'm, I'm looking at yeah. I would, I would like to know who's going to pay she's for the bus. Those of me, but at any rate, uh, you know, I, I think that could be worked out depending on their schedule. I mean, you know, we could take the kids out and, and maybe we don't leave the bus there right at that point if you don't need it until, you know, 11 o'clock the next morning or whatever the schedule is. We could have the bus back in time to, you know, transport whatever you need. Or if is. the bus driver would like to camp out overnight, they could stay there. You know what that would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at our transportation director and she's laughing. So, uh, okay. <laughs> this is one of those <laughs> times <laughs> when our yes. little mini buses yes. would really come in handy if we could ever get them to show up. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking just the same they thing. They just drive their kids out there. Mm -hmm. Right. And drive them around. Mm -hmm. Another concern would be if then that would rely be on us as a cross country team to pay for that bus and bus driver because we only charge students thirty dollars to try to cover the cost of food. It would be a pretty big financial impact on our program that we were counting on this year if that were to be. Well, we'd have to look at the cost, but I'm sure that nineteen the, cents a mile. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> nineteen cents a mile, right? Uh, 
I'm, I'm, I'm sure that cash right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to want to look at numbers. <laughs> I, I think that there's probably, you know, we'd have to look at the cost, but I'm sure that there's probably something in an activities budget somewhere that could help with that. Um, um, they were slashed pretty heavy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what What about um, renting? Can we do that? Rent the vans, like those 15 passenger vans or something? Oh, but do you have to have a class B to drive that? No. no not no. 15 per <laughs> I've actually driven one before. Okay. So for the I have a state but tenant. wasn't there something weird with the So we the um the fifteen passenger vans our our insurance company won't um yeah, cover, cover because they tip. But we could do to the twelve person mm -hmm. two smaller okay, vans. Whatever, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, we could figure that out. We could rent And then that way if they had the van they can drive them down to the wherever they need yeah. and it would it would we could use a bus like if we had to, you know, pack the van full of whatever you need to take. Use the bus to transport the kids out there. The bus can leave. They don't have to stay the night if they don't want to. And then if we had the two vans, then they can use that to transport around the, at their own discretion. You know, go. What if a kid gets sick? Or you know, oh, the bus is coming at eleven, but you know, Sally Sue's throwing up, or I don't know. You know, anything could happen. That way, they they would it would be at their own discretion to get. Why do you have any other parents there to help shop or just to uh, My husband's going to come out the first night. Um, he's a retired teacher from Coeur d'Alene High School, and so he retired this year. So he's going to come out and uh, roll for us and, and help us out with that. And um, nice. on the second night, we have parents doing a hosting a team dinner, so there'll be some parents coming out to bring um, food so it's fresh. We don't have to worry about like refrigeration and stuff for for hamburgers. So we'll have some parents, and parents are welcome to come out at any point. We always make that clear. And if they're uncomfortable for any reason, they always have the option of opting out of it. And they have allowed parents and kids to make a decision about, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna run, I'm gonna participate in the run, but I'm not spending the night. And so even if we had a bus, right, parents would be giving permission for students to leave and not spend the night. So that, I guess that would be kind of the same thing as instead of going home and going back to the fair. Right. Well, you know, I don't know if it's the same back in the day. It used to be that the kids, for any type of sporting event, camp, whatnot, they would have to be bus transported. But then if they were going to leave, they could be released to their parent and right. not leave. Mm -hmm. Right. So I don't know we if that's still, still the that thing. <laughs> okay. Although I think. Um, and I may be incorrect on this, if that's still a policy. I believe parents are allowed to still self-transport if that's mm -hmm. how they choose. I don't think we now require students to ride a bus to a sporting event okay. necessarily. I believe that after COVID, they said that we okay. could opt out of that. Okay. But I don't know that for sure. We don't have kids that do opt out, but I kind of remember that. Uh, mostly because sometimes, because our uh, transportation staff is so lean, mm -hmm. we have times when we don't have a bus that can take kids to an event. So parents are transporting or kids are they're giving permission to kids to self-transport to get to games. So. Any further conversation on this? Uh, no, what, do, what is the expectation tonight just to approve, uh, approve, to approve the trip? Um, because it is at Round Lake, mm -hmm. which was where... A fair it's, or a fair it's a fair mm -hmm. um, Yeah. It says Round Lake. Oh, that's okay. I'm like, did I put it in there? Oh. I was thinking it was from the, the TH. Probably from the TH. Yeah. Yes. I think you just used the form and you didn't search in the place. <laughs> that's your friend. No, I said based on the approval for the Round Lake, I would recommend that we approve the, with the following change that students are transported. Okay. And that was just based on the action the board took for the last mm -hmm. one. Was okay. There. So. So we are re approving the overnight event at Farragut State Park with bus transportation is your recommendation. Or not. Mm -hmm. So if someone would like to bring forward a motion. I would move to approve uh, administration's recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have fun. Thank you. Okay, now we will jump to the bus route approval.
which will also lead into the discussion item of um, transportation follow-up. So we have a motion to, or we have the um, non-transportation zones that are up for approval. Mm -hmm. Do we need to have conversation or discussion on the bus transfer, the non-transportation mm -hmm. zones for approval? I guess, what are the changes from last year? So the only addition is page 10. <coughs> and that's the Bunko Road one. How many kiddos are on that route? Oh wait, introduce yourself first. Oh, sorry, Jessica Dana, Transportation Director. Um, currently, there's no students that would qualify for in lieu of transportation. Um, the students that would be getting on there are really close to Good Hope and Bunko. So we're adding going, or we're going up Good Hope Road? Is yeah, we're gonna just go north on Good Hope. Oh, okay. We used to turn right on Bunko and go up to the ATV turnaround. Uh, okay. so this becomes route. a non-transportation zone. Yeah. So it's B like this. Yes. Yeah. The oh, blue, blue is because of non, non, non That's what I thought. Yeah. It's so being eliminated from our transportation. And we okay. used to go up there for elementary, but I believe it was two or three school years ago. We haven't had any elementary students up there either. Okay. So it was just for high school. Mm -hmm. And this was on that Route 26 that that driver retired <laughs> last year, and then you guys voted to just absorb that. So this was part of that, so we have time. And we pay in low transportation for anybody. Over 1.5 miles. But the only student that would have qualified for that graduated last year. So that worked out good. So we have no students on Bunko Road from Good Hope up to that little point. That would qualify for in okay. Road, yeah. What do you mean that would qualify? So they only qualify if they live 1.5 miles or farther from where the bus stop would be. So they're way out towards the turnaround. Um, so there's no students. That, I mean, there are addresses out there, so if students move, then they would qualify. Um, but currently, there's no students that would qualify. Mm -hmm. How many uh, students don't qualify? I believe that there's six. Okay. But they don't live farther than Skid Road. And what did we vote to absorb? Route 26. Okay. That was the Timberlake High School only route. Mm -hmm. And that was, <clears throat> um, we just didn't hire a driver, so it got rid of the route, but mm -hmm. if we had a driver, the route would have remained? Yeah, that was one of the cuts that the board voted on. Those routes aren't very desirable to drivers anymore with the single tier because they don't qualify for health benefits. Mm -hmm. So most of the time nobody wants to fit on those routes. Okay. Yeah. They're hard to fill. So this phone call road one is the only one that's different from what we approved mm -hmm. a year ago. Yeah, this is the addition. I move to approve the non-transportation <coughs> as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Four in favor, one opposed. Motion carries. All right, so you also have on here your, under our discussion items, we have the transportation follow-up mm -hmm. on the bus parking. So now you're stating that we would actually save $57.54 daily if we park on the northern route. Yep, we'll park buses okay. up at Timberlake High School. So that'll be Athol Elementary drivers, Spirit Lake Elementary, and the two Twin Lakes drivers that go to Timberlake. Where do those drivers come in from? Do they live up this north area or? I'm this thinking just, about winter time. This would just be parking buses during the middle of the day. Oh, from okay. what I understand. Oh, okay. yeah. The buses will still be parked down here for night. Oh, okay, all right, gotcha. I see, so we're just eliminating that one midday kind of trip. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 
for that information. So it work, works out to about ten thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, good job. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Do you guys still have to approve all of that too? Yeah. Is that one of our jobs? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Parents are really chomping out the bit to get kids registered. Oh, that's <laughs> They're all the same, right? Except for the bunco. Yeah. Why nothing's changed? Okay. Oh. There was no memo. So, because it was the non transportation zone. Yeah, it was kind of listed approval. incorrectly. Oh, okay. okay. All right, so I need a motion uh, to approve the bus routes. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to all favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Awesome. Thank you, guys. I also have Thank one you. update for the board. Um, I was able to get a hold of Saxton, our salesman that we are under contract with for the white buses. And unfortunately, he thinks that Pegasus, the manufacturer that won the bid through them, went out of business. Oh, no. Yeah. So that's super unfortunate because we, they were going to honor the cost that, you know, they bid us at, I think it was seventy-four or $79,000. So he, he doesn't think that Pegasus is in business. They've been trying to get a hold of the company, and they can't get a hold of them. So unfortunately, I think that that contract's going to just go away. Um, that's tough. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank but at least we finally have an answer on why yeah. mm -hmm. yes. it wasn't happening. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Now that we've been bouncing around, let's go up to <laughs> board policies. Um, sorry, board go ahead. Uh, I think that Mr. Hoffman might be here. Um, to hear the conversation about the MOU with Rats from the City. Oh, okay. Well, we'll that's here a long time. We're still we're, we're <laughs> still bouncing around, and we can go down to the City of Rathroom MOU. Um. So I did see some of Megan's changes, which then, of course, answer my questions. But I don't know if that was the city's intention. Um, one of my questions was on it's where according to the city of Rathrum they want a meter installed um, but they don't identify who's paying for the installation. But then um, legal's modification in stated that um, we would be, it would be at the cost of the district. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You like that? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so the, so. the need to put the meter in um, is coming from, there's actually a case that's in the Idaho Supreme Court right now about um, it's a uh, misuse of public funds when cities don't charge themselves or bill themselves for, for mm -hmm. utilities. And so in order to charge themselves to provide the water on that <coughs> bill, there needs to be a meter. Um, I don't know, uh, when I spoke with, uh, with Leon, um, he did not specify who, who would be responsible for that. The, his language was we would need to put a meter in. So mm -hmm. in my World. And he said we would need that. That, that, the that city. was that yeah. was that was my understanding walking away because of the language that he used. So right. um, we would just need to clarify that. But, um, but that's the. Way I, I don't have a problem with the meter going in. Oh, we they can read it six times a day if they want. But I don't want to pay for that meter. I, I don't know that. That was. But that was. It's to benefit them, right? It's so yeah. they can read how much water they're Correct. using. Correct. Correct. And I'm not too thrilled about the other piece of that that says they're going to read it for a year. For a year, and whatever the high month is, that's the top limit for there from that day forward forevermore. And if we go over that, then we have to pay the overage. I don't think that was a part of the original agreement dating back. 
Obviously not, because it was never metered. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, so like how would they, yeah. Right, and I guess I don't, uh, maybe I'm, I don't I'm fully understand this, where the law, where the courts are involved, but in talking to Leon, it sounds like they just haven't been charging us for the water, but they're not necessarily paying for the water. But now that they have to have a meter on it, they actually, they have to show that they're paying for it, I think is the intention. So. Right. Well, that's fine. But so I don't, yeah, I don't think they have any idea how much water's been used um, in the past. And so. Sort of odd, really. Mm -hmm. Political subdivisions don't pay taxes, and somebody sues. And it's weird, you know. And said it was a misuse of tax, like fraudulent use of taxpayer money or something. So. Yeah, you know, I can kind of understand that. You know, but there are ways to deal with that. I, I just don't think that uh, we should walk away from the original agreement that was put together with the city when that land was developed. You know, they're as obligated today to live up to that as, as we are. Right. And uh, and we've made every effort to do that, I think, allowing them to use all kinds of facilities all over the school district. Right. For little or no cost. And now they're going to come along and say, well, if you use too much water, you're going to pay for it. Well, we're paying already water and sewer bills on everything else, so you do great here. Was any of the language from that agreement transferred over into this? Um, Do we know? I think, um, I think Megan actually, uh, our attorney, um, no, she, she, she just she edited the, the, the draft that, the was, draft given that her. was given to us. So mm -hmm. right. I would tell you that the city attorney uh, re rewrote all of this and submitted. Um, well, we need to see what's been eliminated from that original agreement. Yeah, and then the use of our facilities, they're gonna, they're gonna, what's it say? They're gonna coordinate the city. The city's gonna co coordinate the usage of our facilities, not us. Not only that, but the priority of use, we're basically giving them access to our buildings over our students and our athletes in our community. Yeah, there is some language in there that I had some hard time around. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's got to be, I mean, if there's, a, if there's a team that's a Lakeland team that's a volleyball team that's off season and they're Lakeland kids, like we do 75%, they get free. Mm -hmm. They're 75%, we have priority over anybody else. They can't just come in and... It says, the city shall be given priority for the use of district facilities located within the city of Raptor when not being utilized by the district. By so the that, district, yes, I know, by the district. So if they're saying, if they're not attached to the club, district, club like teams. a club team, they can have priority over our club teams, oh, but gotcha. we're trying to build our sports programs to compete with our other schools, you know, and mm -hmm. they're going to push us out. That's not right. Especially if they're seventy five percent Lakeland kids or more, we should have priority. I, I do think that um, I do think that there's a, a way and Jimmy and I have been kind of talking about um, ways for the district to work and the club teams to work with the city because there is value also for our teams to have a strong park and rec program because oh, that's where the little kids <coughs> get their Sorry. foot in the door, right? So um, we also don't want to be right. in anything in place that's I'm just thinking like to if we're, you know, like give them two days and we have three days or something like that, you know, split it, you know. We get Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they get Tuesday and Thursday or and Saturday or something, I don't know. But for them to have priority over our sports teams, that doesn't seem right. Yeah, the clause uh, that's in there that says, uh, right the first of that priority use paragraph, uh, district shall have priority use, which shall mean only those programs offered by the district itself and not any private or associated groups 
even if said private or associated groups include district staff or students. Well, and I think that's what Dave's referring to. We have some associated groups okay. that uh, depend on, on utilizing those facilities to help build our programs, and I don't think we should be precluding that. So that clause needs to go away somehow or, or stated differently. I agree. And so they're setting out that they will not use Betty Kiefer or Lakeland High School. Am I reading that correctly? Um, it says, um, the city shall begin yeah. a priority uh, except for the gym space located at Betty Kiefer and Lakeland High School. Mm -hmm. But then in talking with Mr. Hoffman in the winter time, the winter season is, is the most concerning. Uh, because volleyball. we have boys and girls basketball and then our club volleyball teams are that's their Practice. season so they're trying to get into gym space and um, and uh, that she primarily uses those teams use Lakeland Middle School primarily because of, of uh, they have the equipment the volleyball mm -hmm. nets and those things and so um, when we were talking about this MOU and um, how can we make it better? Uh, because I think there are some things in here that are helpful to the district, like the, uh, re the reduction of the permitting fees, especially if we're gonna re-side John Brown and do any kind of major renovation of any of the, the city schools. Yeah, you might wanna take a real hard look at that, that uh, information. I'm not sure it's specific enough in terms of what fees will or will not be charged. So we can look at that and you can give me yeah. some feedback on that. But um, when we talked, Jimmy felt like in the fall, uh, the issue, there really isn't that much of an issue with clubs and park and rec and, uh, and our facilities because most of park and rec in the fall is outdoors. It's a lot of mm -hmm. soccer. Mm -hmm. um, it's the winter time and so, um, he just asked me the question, why can't we just all sit in a room together and work on the schedule together and submit it mm -hmm. so that we ensure that everybody who would fit that 75% that Dave's talking about has access to a gym to, to practice. Um, when I asked, uh, I was talking to Michelle about kind of thinking through this and she said, well, we can't, this is an MOU with the city, we can't, we're not writing an MOU with the club, so we have to be careful about the language that we use, but is there a way that we can put that in there that, that maybe the city is going to work collaboratively with the school district instead of, you're, we, we get this, it's, um, we're going we're gonna to meet and we're going to work collaboratively to ensure that everybody who needs access gets access. Is there a different way to write it? Well, and I, it kind of falls into the fact that they're going to submit their request in G July for the entire year. I mean, that's, they don't even know how many teams they're going to have for the next spring. So why would they be, I, I don't think that's beneficial whatsoever. I think for their season of sports, when they go out to um, say, hey, come sign up for rec, then once the teams are signed up, then they should be submitting what their use is, what their use needs to be. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going back, I mean, because we are going back to this whole bank blanket slate, I cannot talk tonight, um, to where, you know, we get everything and then we'll let you know what we don't need. Even though it says that they're, they're hoping not to do that, but it's not saying they're not going to do that. Right. And that's, to me, problematic. And then I don't like the coordinating, them coordinating. It's our job to coordinate, not them. You know, it's our facilities, not theirs. Mm -hmm. Is there any, are there any, <coughs> did I capture that together, or correctly what we talked about? Yeah, Jimmy Hoffman, principal of Lakeland High School. I think we have to remember back when this verbiage, I think in this MOU, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, is a very old MOU when it was when it was originated um, back, I believe, almost 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, back in 2008, Park and Rec was primarily the only youth program in our community. 
it did make some sense that they probably, you know, uh, I, I can see why the district would say, yeah, you know, you can use our facilities. Since then, since 2008, we have the second largest wrestling club in the state of Idaho. We have a well-established uh, Lakeland Elite basketball program that is 100% Lakeland District uh, students, along with Idaho Impact, who meets the 75% Lakeland School District um, kids, and then our junior tackle program as well. However, I mean, they have right. all the space they need. But when they, what happens is when they when they take priority over over our facilities right after our high school teams and, mm -hmm. and activities use our facilities. Um, that pushes a lot of us in the clubs, uh, the Lakeland clubs, out to go right. try to, like right now, Lakeland Elite Board just met and they're um, looking at prices in, in Spokane Valley for 100% Lakeland kids. Oh, wow. And I, I, think there's, I think there's a better way. Mm -hmm. I really do. Be. And mm -hmm. I think that the best way is, I think Park and Rec is extremely important. I don't want this to ever get... Uh, uh, you know, said to where I don't, I don't think Park Rec is important. It's a, it's a great beginner program, and it's necessary for our community. Right. But there's one more step up to be if kids choose to a little bit more competitive route that is becoming very, very popular in our community as well. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to be able to sit down and try to help everybody get an equal chance of, of using the facilities that they need to ensure the success of their program. So I think there's a way to do that. I don't think giving one club or uh, entity a priority over the other. Um, well, the school district has priority. School right. district for sure. Oh, after, yes. after, mm -hmm. after that, uh, given park and rec priority, or even you know clubs priority. I, I don't, I don't know. I think there's a way to make sure everybody gets what they need. I think there's enough facilities in our district to ensure that. Well, the other thing is we have to make sure that those. Uh, facilities get properly cleaned and maintained and you know you can't use them 24 hours a day you can't be using them even until midnight on an everyday basis because the wear and tear is going to be excessive and they're not going to get charged a dollar for the wear and tear correct or the lights or the heat mm -hmm. so you know keep all that in mind uh to, to speak to that um our our clubs currently uh, from our wrestling club to Lakeland Elite and to Junior Tackle um, and, and Idaho Impact even um, has, has been very gracious about giving back to our high school programs. Um, I can speak to Lakeland Elite. Um, we were able to purchase a, roughly a $9,000 shooting basketball machine for our entire basketball program for all kids to use. Um, our Lakeland uh, Wrestling Club uh, was a huge part of that renovation that happened up there. That is our new wrestling room. They just bought us a new map to competition map. And so our clubs that are using our facilities are giving back a tremendous amount. Right. And really taking care of the facilities. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with a lot of those people are invested in the school itself. Mm -hmm. And so I think we're very cautious of that. Um, but I, I would just like to see if we if we do stick with that MOU, uh, sticking all of our clubs. What that would look like is Idaho Impact Volleyball, who has uh, over 15 different teams, and the Lakeland Elite has 11 different teams, starting in the third grade through the eighth grade, boys and girls. That would stick us in two facilities: Betty Keeper and Lakeland High School, where you can't get into Lakeland High School's gyms until approximately 7:30 p.m. So last year, if we were just to go off of that, our little kids aren't getting out of there until 10 o'clock p.m. Mm -hmm. And so um, we would be, we'd be have that little chunk of time, and then Betty Keeper, which is a carpeted uh, gym for the remainder of our teams. It's just, it, it's not enough space to, and then that's not including the volleyball. And so I think there's, a, I think there's just a better way. I think these people need to probably just sit down and, and discuss what, what is actually needed, right. and then divvy it up. I would agree. Yeah, me too. And it's, I, it's almost like how did we get? It's been working fine all of these years, and now we're well. It was well, that more of an explanation right. and, and yeah. an understanding. Is it, it Park and Rec was the was the primary right? Right. right. Yeah. The the reason that we um, we 
open the door to this conversation is when we looked at the MOU, we were getting, other than the fact that they were paying for the water on that field, we got nothing out of that MOU, but Park and Rec got first right of refusal, refusal for all of our our city schools mm -hmm. um, for, for usage. And um, we just felt like we were giving a lot and we're really getting much in return. So right. yeah. that was the why. Um, so it sounds like maybe you table this and I kind agree. of go back to the yeah, drawing board. I made some notes. So um, I will uh, invite um, Mr. Hoffman um, when I work with the city to rewrite the portion of the MOU that's talking about the use of facilities so we can do that in a more equitable way. And then I, I just went back and was reading the um, portion of the MOU with regard to waiving all the fees. And it's a lot of legal kind of language without a lot of specificity. They, they reference different fees that they can't waive and fees that they can waive. And so I'm just going to request that, that, that that's actually, there's some sort of a fee schedule. What can be waived, what can't be waived. So we can see what that might look like. Oh, is there anything else? I just wish there was a way that we could just like sit down all together and hash it out instead of this back and forth and back they, and forth. The it's city council really is actually difficult. willing to do a joint meeting with the school board if that is something that you guys are open to. Yeah. So that I'll, I'll, so I'll ask Leon if we can schedule that. There was a little bit of confusion on the crossing guards, their language, um, that they're providing five, but if one leaves, then they don't need to replace the crossing guard, but the district yeah. uh, agrees that if they wanna replace the crossing guard, or any crossing guard in addition to the five, that the city provides. So the city's providing five, but if that drops down to four, or they're three. not filling it up. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah the they all walk away. The guards are not likely to stay there for very long. It's a fun job. <laughs> it's a Especially when you get sight sights. Like um, so that didn't seem to make much sense of what their actual intent is there. The, the, that language is, I mean, that's basically what we have in practice right now, which is why the language is there. So the city used to be the one with, with all of our crossing guards, and when people quit, they would um, put the ad out, and they were really struggling to get people to apply because it's such a fun job. Fun job. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so at one point, uh, probably like five years ago, uh, Tommy McLean came and met with me and said, at least I'm, I, I'm struggling. I cannot get people to apply for these positions, but we have to have crossing guards. And so I, we started talking to some of our paras who work in this area and asking if we can add an additional 1.5 hours of time, bringing them t to eight. And some of them were not at benefited position yet, so by doing that they got benefits, full benefits, if they would do the para and then pair it with the crossing guard. So that we were successful with that and able to fill those. And so that's that's I think why this language is in there is because to wean us off of their crossing guards and hire our own. Yes. <laughs> because that's it's, what's it's been happening difficult. because they'll open the position but they're struggling. They struggle yeah. to find somebody to just because they come in the morning for two hours and they have the whole day and then they have to come back for two well, hours. Well, no, and I, I, I get all of that, um, but their language is a hot mess yep. and it's not, it's not good. Um, and then I really didn't, on, their, on the maintenance section, basically um, the city shall, at its expense, provide supervision of its use, cause the premise floor to be swept. Well, the carpeted gems aren't swept. Are they going to vacuum them? And um, any debris or garbage to be removed from the seating or audience areas. Why aren't they just hauling out the trash? I mean, 
there could be more. And maybe I'm asking too much. I don't know. But I do know that our maintenance staff gets extremely burdened by what they have to come in and contend with because of the way things are left. So if there could be a little bit more responsibility on the city's part of cleaning up after themselves, mm -hmm. I think that might uh, mean something to our maintenance department because they shouldn't have to go and clean up after the city. Mm -hmm. I know that sometimes it happens after you know club or tournament usage, but I do know that the, the league, the other teams, etc., <laughs> they do a pretty good job of trying to clean up after themselves. So I think we could hold the city to that same standard. So on that note, I motion that we table the MOU for the city of Rathdrum. Could I just mention one other item? Yes, you may. Since we're going through the negotiations once again. Yes. Uh, and that has to do with notice and termination. There's nothing in neither paragraph does it indicate a time. Usually, you know, you stipulate you have to have at least 30 days notice or 90 days notice or something. Right. It says where to send it in the mail, but it doesn't say how soon you have to do it or how long you have to respond or anything like that. And why are we entering into this MOU for 10 years? Uh, what? Uh, That's did not see. Where is that written? Um, it says under compliance, it says the disagreement shall remain in effect for a period of 10 years from the date entered into, detailed above, um, unless otherwise terminated by either party with an option to extend for up to an additional 10 years upon mutual written agreement. Mm -hmm. It's item number 4A. Nope, I did not catch that one. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we should be in an agreement for 10 years. Things change. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you, you can change the agreement. Yeah, you can. That. Yes, you can. You but but it, it, the way you're just reading that means that we're not going to revisit it for we don't years. We don't have to. We don't have to. there's an issue. Right. So if we don't have eyes on it, we're, right. we're going to end up yeah, being well, in the same. If I remember right in the old one, we had language where it would be revisited by the, what's it called, team? I can't remember. Uh, once a year and decide whether or not you want to do anything with it. Right, and that never happened. And that should happen. It should happen. It should happen. Yeah. Well, that was the other thing. Uh, it, it talks about the what executive committee. I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, it's you and the city administrator. And that says, let's say, I go back and look. Hey, it's it's really kind of odd because that's only two of you. You don't have a lot of numbers. So if, if you if you don't both agree on something, it doesn't happen, I guess. Oh yeah, that's where you, we have one vote, but through you, and they have one vote through the city administrator. And if you all have a tie, who breaks it? So that makes yeah. coin toss. Yep, <laughs> that's the legal determination in the state of Idaho on a tie yes. vote. Yes, I would. I rather, know this. I, I would rather it actually the language be the same as what we have for our SRO, which is that prior to April first of the year, I'm meeting with. In this case, it would be the city manager yeah. or city administrator to discuss the MOU and any um, considerations or modifications that right. we right. might yeah. want yeah, to recommend, and then we go back to our two respect, governing boards, boards. Um, to get it approved. That would well, be my. But you um, and the city administrator, or both of your designees, create a joint board. No. So that yeah. So the language is. Um, so, I would say strike that completely. Yeah. So you, we did talk about potentially this board meeting jointly with the yeah. city council. So I can share some of these yeah. concerns with Leon, and then work with him uh, and Maria um, to work with you guys to schedule a time when you can sit down face to face and go through each of those, so that together you can come up with the language that you're. Okay. We can do that, but I think we'd be going around in a circle. I, I don't have any hard work about you and Leon sitting down and hammering it out. I kind of, so, um, the only reason I'm suggesting that this might be a good route is when I meet with Leon, the city attorney is always there 
and she's the one that is doing the majority of the talking. Um, and I'm not there with our attorney, and s uh, so I feel a little bit. That's two on one. That's a disadvantage. Yeah, exactly. And Some of the city council members want to talk to us too. I say we just set the meeting, at, like mm -hmm. Randy said, and let's have a conversation. It would build um, a mutual trust and a good faith effort in knowing that we are doing our best effort to work together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think um, the city council, that's what the city council wants. Yeah. Um, I, the new attorney. Enough said. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, well, she will be in that meeting. Yes, yeah, they so did not have their attorney present, or we have our attorney present. Yeah, as well. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So I would, I would guess that their attorney will be present. So I, we will reach out to Megan and see if she's available. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So there is a motion to table this. Was there a second? I think Bob seconded it. Mm -hmm. All right. Second. <laughs> if you didn't, you didn't know. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Be opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay. Now, is there anybody else here <laughs> waiting for something on the agenda that they like to have brought forward early? We can. All right. Well, bump down to item I-15, the LEA president compensation. You asked Randy for this to be brought back to the table. Oh, we're way down? You were I bouncing did? around. Way down. Well, we, Bob asked for it to be put back on the agenda. We talked about it last month. Yeah. And then um, you had suggested, well, we could put it back up for action. Oh, because it wasn't an action item. Correct, it was a discussion yeah. item. Well, I gave you my rationale in the past, and I know that I need to walk through that again, but right. we did have some, as I recall, some discussion about uh, potentially uh, an additional <coughs> period of uh, available for the LEA president for the small option. Mm -hmm. I would move to give the LEA president an additional prep period to work on LEA district Sorry. concerns. Yeah. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Do we need any further discussion? How many prep periods does he have now? One. Just one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Nay. Two in favor, three opposed, motion does not carry. <clears throat> Is there any other motion that would like to be brought forward? Okay, no other motion, we'll be moving on. So now we'll go back up to the policies. Um, the first one item uh, policy 1303 policies and procedures it's brought back because we need to add it's more for clerical we, we're adding advanced opportunities which is I think a new policy for our district that we're going to review annually um, and it's just being added to the list that's the only thing okay um, then I think that's in the wrong place. service animals in school that was a com Complete rewrite from the previous one we had. Um, you can see the language was, there's a lot more language to it. Mm -hmm. um, that's in line with statute, federal and state. Self directed learners is a new policy that we've never had, um, but we're bringing that on board. Um, and along with the policy, which is listed, is the application and the procedures um, that sort of uh, basically goes over the what it takes to become a self-directed learner. Bottom line is it's, it's a team effort, so to speak, 
because it's the student, the teacher, the parent, and then of course the building administrator. Mm -hmm. And there's um, you know procedures in place to make sure children are on task or students are on task and everybody's doing what needs to be done for the student in their best interest. Um, the two forms are forms that were tabled from last month. Language was cleaned up so that it's not quite so, um, it's a little bit more uh, appealing, I guess. But these are forms, uh, one's for the obscene material, which is governed by statute. Um, the other form is if a parent um, wants to challenge a particular library book because they believe that the content is not up to the Lakeland standard, then they would fill out that form and give it to the library. And they, both of these forms have a process to follow through. The second form, just to add to that, anybody in the district can, mm -hmm. can fill out. The one that is tied to the new library law can only be the parent of a minor child. Um, that's the way the law is written. So that's why there are two. Is this uh, policy being brought forth uh, because of the change in the Idaho law? 33.512B, is that it? 33.512, where are you at? It's the, I don't, it's the library bill, I can't remember what the number is. Well, that's the reference at the bottom of the policy here. That's all. 18, 15, 17 B. <coughs> yeah, it's in the, and then 18, 15, 14. Well, that would be it's at the top of the form. The 18, 15, is 14, and the 18, 15, 17. Yeah. Setting that aside for a moment, is there any advantage to the school district to have this policy? Well, these are forms. This isn't a policy. The policy was already approved. 2,500. Well, there are, there are legal obligations in that statute that we, we have to meet, and so um, I think the policy is important because it clarifies for everybody what, uh, what obscene materials actually, what it means, the definitions are uh, in place, and then the fact that it truly, it, the law says that only the parent of a minor child who is given a book can can challenge that, and there is a fee attached to it if you don't meet um, uh, certain expectations. So as soon as the challenge is made, we have to remove the book and put it in an adult-only section, which we don't have in our library, so we go behind the librarian's desk. While it goes through the review process, the law calls for a library book committee uh, challenge committee, so we have to put that in place. So I would say the policy is very important, and the form follows the, the language of the law. I apologize. I thought we were still on 2470. Oh, so oh, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> 2470 is the learner. Oh, the self-directed learner. Oh, um, yes, because we have. So that is important. In my perspective, that is important for attendance for us because we have students who are uh, who play in the in like the WHL hockey league, and they they travel or they go live with the host family. Um, if they're identified as a self-directed learner, they're counted as in attendance for us, regardless of whether they're here or not. So it does help us with our. Uh, with our attendance. So that's the advantage to the district. That's, the advantage that's what to the I district. want to get on the record. Yes, that is the advantage to the district. And it is good for kids also, uh, because we do have a lot of kids who are um, gymnasts who do a lot of traveling for meets who have to miss school, but they are still really solid um, <coughs> students. And we want to make that, um, it takes the burden of that, you know, we get the nine day attendance letter and I have to petition for your grades when you've you've got A's and B's, and you're missing simply because you have to go to Missoula for a gymnastics meet um, on Friday. So that's the other side of the coin question. Are there ways that students can take advantage of this policy and not comply? Yeah. As soon as they are not passing classes or not meeting 
the expectations, then the the um, the title of self-directed learner is rescinded. Yeah, and they only retain uh, the designation. They should be out there. Yeah. yeah, they only retain the designation if the teachers and the team says that they retain the designation. Yeah. So, if somebody says no, nope, you aren't meeting cutting mustard, then they're not doing it. Not cutting mustard. Yeah. Thank you. I apologize for referring back. That's okay. You just got schooled on something you didn't probably need. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the safety busing needed to be updated. I believe that came out in an audit, um, mm -hmm. so it was updated. And I believe the district owned vehicles was also, that was brought forward. I believe both of these were brought forward by Jessica that we needed to get them updated um, and cur current, I guess. Does anybody have any questions, comments, or further conversation on any of the policies? Being brought forward. I had a question on the form. Um, it was on one of the library, one of those library forms. I made a comment. Was I was holding. I was curious as to the questions that we asked. Um, There was one of the questions that we asked on there, you know, if they had read it or how much of it did they read or All right, well, I can't find yeah. it now. We did you read the material in its entirety? Yeah. If not, what section did you read? Yes, I had a note. I had a note. It's not showing up now. I believe that's on both of the forms. Mm -hmm. That information, I think, was intended to help the committee who's going to read the book that's challenged to kind of have an understanding of, yeah. of where the concern might be so that when they're reading it, they can focus on that. Yeah. Um, well, I don't see any problem in asking where the offensive section is, but I think it's irrelevant if they read the whole book or not. If, I don't think we need to ask that. I don't think it makes if they can point out passage that's maybe offensive, I, I don't see why they would have to, um, it shouldn't matter if they read it in its entirety or not, and I don't see the point of that. And they might not want to subject themselves to reading an entire book that they find offensive, mm -hmm. you know, um, or what have you, if they disagree with or whatever. The, um, I think it's perfectly fine. Obviously, we need to know where the ending <coughs> material is, but I don't see the relevancy of them reading it in its entirety, answering the question. You know. So, in a sense, I think what I hear you saying is you'd like item number two removed because item three says identify the portion of the material objected to and why. Um, please be specific and provide page numbers and sections. And I believe it's that way. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So that would be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we need, obviously, we need to know um, where the offense is, and that's it. You know. Okay, so it would just be on, <coughs> it would be item two on both forms that you're requesting be removed? Yes. Okay. Thank you. My brain got lost, so I lost my notes there. It's all good. What happened to me? So I move that we approve the board policies uh, as presented with the corrections made to uh, 2500 F1 and 2500 F2. A second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Moving on to the supplemental ballot language. Um, so resolution's been presented, it was presented last month. Mm -hmm. Now it's being brought, uh, asking that we approve the draft levy resolution. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. I need a roll call vote. Trustee Jones. That's you. <laughs> roll call. Sure, the other end. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're closer. Yes. <laughs> Vice Chair Bain. Yes. 
Chair Thompson? Yes. Trustee Quimby? Yes. Trustee Grissom? Yes. On that, the motion passes. Uh, Trustee Thompson, uh, yep. Holly Troxell did offer to assist with turning in the resolution of board version of the form ballot, of the ballot and the form notice to Kootenay Bonner County Clerks if we would like them to. Would you like them to do that? Are you not able to do that? I can do that. I, I don't have a problem doing it. They just offered to do it for us. Okay. Is um, there an advantage to having them do that? Are they, they gonna charge us for it? I can check on that. But no, I just they know exactly what needs to be turned in. I don't have a problem doing it either. Okay. I suppose that would be an administrative call. Okay. I will work on that. Thank you. Um, we've already discussed the RAP from City MOU, moving to the Washington State University MOU. Apparently this has been in place for a while and has never been brought back to, <laughs> we back haven't, to the board, we haven't, I should say. Yeah, we haven't utilized this Washington State MOU um, in several years, so we haven't had any interns with them, so they they sent this to us and because it hasn't been brought to this board for approval, we brought it forward. Are we anticipating any uh, one to use it? Um, I, that would be a Lynn question. I'm not sure. Uh, all of the intern information goes to her. I'm just curious. Yeah. I believe <coughs> she had made the statement that there is one person. I would, I would guess that that's typically why we get them is because somebody mm -hmm. wants to come to our district. Yeah. But right. that's that's right. Yeah. We do that one. Well, well, that's typically why we have it from the board. Yeah. I just don't. I can't say for sure. Move to approve. Mm -hmm. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing then the motion carries. Moving down to the uh, LJSD operational plan. We had three parents who gave input, or three community, well, I guess it was parents because it went through the SkyAlert system, and those were no changes suggested, none happy with how it is, and why are we still, in out, still calling out COVID? Because <laughs> COVID's calling us out by making us do this. Right, so this one is the last time that we have to do this and have it, so it'll be posted on our website until February and then we can take it down. Move to approve. Second. Motion is second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Moving on to the Sick Leave Bank Committee administration appointment. Um, this is a task that we have according mm -hmm. to the MOU, or no, the negotiated <laughs> agreement. <laughs> um, and last year we appointed uh, Chris McDougall and Lisa Hoffman. Are you recommending that again? Recommend okay. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Aye. Should have asked before, but did you ask them if they wanted to do it again? <laughs> See, they did a great job. They did a great job. Part of the... I did not ask them okay. if they wanted to do it again, but they both were very happy to be chosen last year, and it's not a... Um, and exhaust. Okay, exhaust but it. part of it was to rotate it so others could have exposure. So okay. maybe next year you consider that. Okay. We've already voted. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and don't bring it back, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have the um, fall athletic schedules. Looks like everybody's going to be busy. Yeah. Yep. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Moving on to the school handbooks. Move to approve. Second. second. <laughs> yeah, motion. All right, you two. <laughs> motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Moving on to the stuff. Oh, I got something. Oh, yeah. handbook. Oh, well, Willie's uh, the coach on wrestling on your website's not on there. Okay, for contact information. Okay. Don't see anything else. All right. They've done a great job, though. Yeah. Yes, it, it's, it's awesome. awesome. Yeah, they just keep getting where it was in the beginning. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> they keep getting better. Well, that was cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First thing it looked like good. So congrats to them. <laughs> uh, truth hurts sometimes. Mm -hmm. 
Um, let's see here. Uh, moving on to the supplemental curriculum for board consideration. So the request is that we would approve the supplemental curriculum with the exception of pay it forward because the um, link was the wrong to the wrong book. It was the adult version, not the child version. Mm. And if you read through the comments, you kind of <laughs> get like that. that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that is the recommendation. Do we have any conversations we want to have on the um, what's being brought forward? I thought we didn't approve the giver before. But it's back on the list. <clears throat> I thought I that was one that correct. was Because, yeah. yeah, I saw that as well. I remember thinking when I saw that on the list, too, I was like, I thought we yeah, I thought we already spoke on that. So, so Lynn probably just didn't have it marked as denied, oh, and she's, yeah. um, she's just going through and going sure. to be systematically bringing forward the novels that we've had in the district for a long time. Oh, okay to the board so that they all they were eventually get approved. Right. Um, so that, that was probably a miss. I'm curious why the two different versions of the Percy Jackson, that one graphic and one not, so the graphic novel is written so it looks like a comic strip, mm -hmm. and um, some of our um, special education students have an easier time digesting the information with the pictures associated right. with it. Um, so we use it. Uh, we mm -hmm. use both versions, and sometimes um, our just our kids like to be able to they like the pictures. I like pictures. Yeah, <laughs> that's the way. <line. laughs> I wish they would use a different title other than graphic novel because yeah. graphic sends a picture of ooh, um, there's some, or something. Yeah. yeah, but this truly is just a comic strip. That, that's the that's what they call mm -hmm. the comic strip style writing. Any further discussion? Um, no, I guess not. I don't know. I'm fine, so I'm fine. Move to approve the recommended list. Second. Uh, all but the pay it forward. Correct, okay. yes. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Mm -hmm. Four in favor, one opposed. Motion carries. I just wish we had higher standards. A lot of time approving such things, but whatever. The history is great. It'd be interesting to hear the Roman discussion. All right, moving to the next item is the alternative authorization for school psychology, psychologist, or, you know, <laughs> psychiatrist, um, school psych. So we have someone that is finishing their master's degree through GU in school psychology um, and wants to become a pupil service staff school psych. Um, so is this in lieu of actually hiring somebody with experience, or is this in addition to? Well, they, those people with experience don't seem to exist, so this is a person who is almost done with her program and they're in the state because we, this is a definitely a hard to fill position. The state allows us to do the alternate authorization so that we can hire her while she finishes her last um, of her program. So have we ran an ad, and if oh. so, where and how long? Or with, I think we have school site position had, open for over yeah, a year. Yeah, it's oh. like been open forever. We just, and it, it, we put it, we advertise it out everywhere. This, oh. The state is cracking down on alternate authorizations, so Brooke actually has to really kind of jump through hoops anymore. 
Um, we have to show, she has to, exactly what you're asking. We have to prove to the state that the position's been open, that we haven't had any candidates who are, have the certification we're looking for and are qualified, um, and that it's gone to the board and, and that the board has approved it. So. so we had no candidates, nobody applied in a year for the position? We, and she she interviews when they come along. She interviews and um, we just but we haven't had any. Oh wow! So it's it's super hard to fill, and she's even had to contract services before, which is very costly. Well, I know so. some districts literally that is their site they it's out of state. So yeah. Zoom. Yes. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. They make a lot more money that way. So yeah. when we we found this opportunity, we jumped on it. Yeah. COVID taught everybody that. Yeah. <laughs> I wish we could unlearn some COVID things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I have those for my only questions. I don't have any other questions. I'll move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. I could be not seeing it but I don't show that we're running an ad for school psychologist under our... It's, it's closed now because, because we have yeah. this position. As soon as we... So we just start having one? Well, as soon as... We, yeah, we... Okay. Um, yep. As soon as we interview, we close the position so people don't continue to apply while we're going through that process. So... Okay. Um, last item for action is ISBA membership. Bob, you asked for this to be on the agenda. I move the board approve uh, rejoining the ISBA. Do we want to have any discussion on this? What, what do we get? Uh, what do we get from it from paying for it? That's what I want to know. What do we get? Because if we get something, then I don't have a problem with it. But I don't see us getting anything that we can't already get. <coughs> Well, I'll tell you what you won't get by not being a member. You won't be joining any regional meetings of boards of trustees. You won't be joining any state convention of boards of trustees. We haven't went to any. Has anybody went to any? I did. We did. Yeah. Yeah, we we did too. <laughs> it was the one that was at the regional. Oh, the you regional. did? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Bob, actually, you, you didn't show up to that one. That's true. I didn't know you were, the board you were supposed to go, but you didn't show that. up. I thought that was Because I got your lottery everybody. ticket. <laughs> oh, yeah. I did, and I won it all. It is. Is exactly. there state yeah. career option? Yeah. Yep. Which I think you can go as a guest, too. Right. Yeah. We also don't participate in the day on the hill with our legislators in Boise in February. But I do believe we could participate as long as we knew when the date for education was. Mm -hmm. We can go on down there and listen and talk. I mean, I don't think we have to go on invitation by ISBA. I believe anybody could go and converse right. on those days on the hill. Okay. Uh, that's something I think we should be doing. I agree. Yeah. Do we need further discussion or conversation? I, I don't have any. Randy? Okay, so we do have a motion. I will second the motion. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Aye. Two in favor, three opposed. Motion fails. Is there another motion that anyone wants to bring forward? Okay. On that note, we move into discussion items. Um, extracurricular student trips. We have board pre-approved activities, pre-approval activities, protocol. That was in my okay. follow-up also, so mm -hmm. okay. unless you had some input for me, I think we're good. Then on the 24-25 staff badges. Um, oh, I do, wait, I do have a little bit on that. Okay, okay. Student trips. Apparently there were, there was at least a trip being done every year that we didn't know about. So, um, this I want to make sure that all of the schools and all of any advisors, coaches, anybody understands that this is now 
All departments. Yes. This will go on our, so we have a, um, our first admin meeting of the year is next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of this kind of information, so they will, they will be given this protocol um, so that we don't have situations where we're finding out after the fact that we have. So can somebody fill the board in? What trip did we have that we did? It sounded like it was about? a leadership retreat uh, for the leadership kiddos at Lake Lake High School. It was alluded to in the cross country conversation. Yeah. One of the coaches stated that their child drove to the LHS leadership. And right. Oh, that was, we didn't yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. That, that we didn't was, know about, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was not the Round Lake. Yeah. No, no, that was the, that's the THS one, okay. but we didn't okay. know about the LHS one, so. Okay. All right. I thought that's what it was, but I wanted to make sure mm -hmm. that there wasn't another one. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> that was it. So okay. this will be on that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, then pop in back. Any other questions or comments you have? No. Um, moving down to the staff badges, every year we'll be getting, everyone within the district gets a new badge um, to identify the school year. So as just a step, the, the color changes and whatnot. So to prevent shenanigans and right. people that shouldn't be on campus right. with a pretend badge, etc. So I do believe that um, I checked with Rebecca and all five of you have a digital picture on file. Yeah. Okay. So you don't have to have a new picture done unless you want a new picture done, but they'll be able to print you a new badge. Perfect. Perfect. As I had mentioned, at, I think it was before the meeting started, that um, I don't know if the printer that is being used for those ID badges was not printing correctly or whatever, but the image is peeling off into the sleeves, so I don't know. We, we got a new printer this year. Uh, okay. Within the past couple of months. So that is taken care of. Cool, thank you. <laughs> I just didn't want us doing a whole bunch of new badges and having them peeling and looking weird. Mm -hmm. And faces distorted where you can't see the image anyway. That's kind of cool to see it on your face. I know, it's like a like almost <laughs> slightly sideways. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to the classified handbooks. Calcified. Calcified. Yeah. Like, nope. <laughs> we didn't even catch that. It's a little typo. I wasn't going to call it out. <laughs> um. Do we want to have any conversation on these? No. Mm -hmm. no. no? Okay. Well, thank you for providing them so that we can look at them mm -hmm. and look through them. Same with the guest teacher handbook. Any conversation or? No. No, it's just good to see them. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So we do approve all the handbooks. Or not approve. They're not <laughs> action. <laughs> We're yeah, discussing. That. We're just oh, discussing. He wanted to move on. <laughs> our, our plan he doesn't want conversations. Oh, discussion. He just yeah. wants to yeah. our, our plan moving forward, unless you want us to do it differently, is anytime we write a new handbook, we will bring that to you mm -hmm. for approval. Obviously, the student handbooks get approved annually. Mm -hmm. But once they've been approved, we will just annually bring them for discussion so you can see and make sure that the right changes have been made. I would assume that would be at the August meeting or the July. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Preferably uh, the shorter of the two meetings would right. be great. Well, we have a lot of them, so we actually are kind of splitting them up so you don't get a long Perfect. crazy list of handbooks. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks, because they're long to read. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's great information that's it's important for everything to be in writing. It's right there. Yeah. We have the mentor protege handbook. Any discussion on that one? No. No, it looks great. We have the levy update. So when the board approved that we were going out to a levy, I, um, I promised the board that I would bring monthly updates with regard to activities that we have been doing around the levy. So these are the things. Um, that I have done so far. Um, I am speaking tomorrow at the Ratson Chamber luncheon. I'm the keynote lunch speaker. Featured speaker. To speak. Yes. Um, and uh, Lakeland High School gave me two um, gold all access.
access passes to be raffled off um, for all events at Lakeland High School. Oh, good. That's part of that. So, um, I have a. I think I. I think I shared with you uh, kind of my plan for the entire levy campaign as far as getting information out to people. But this is what we've accomplished so far. <coughs> um, did we have any presents at the Apple Days? No, because I did, I did not have either of those dates on my calendar, so I, I missed that. Okay. Apple Days was huge. Yeah, Michelle was she, she had a great oh, time. I was in, in the newspaper. You didn't see me. My granddaughter was front page. Was she? Yeah, we, we were in it. We, go, we do every year. We yeah. get first place. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I need to have that on the calendar because I yeah. do not have it. It's a second uh, weekend in August every year. Thank you. How and you said Bayview? In Bayview, too, and I can't remember. I don't remember when when theirs is. Okay, yeah. I have to look into that. Second weekend? Of August, yep, for Applebee's. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I remember when the kids were real tiny, there was uh, four cars in the parade. <laughs> that's awesome. Literally. Yep. And right. that's all they were, were cars. Yep. Not in the parade, just four cars. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, lots it's of change. Definitely yeah. growing. Yeah. Um, one of the things uh, I would like to do, um, and I can bring this as an action item in September, but just for you to think about, I do think it's I know we got some pushback from patrons the last time we ran a levy with regard to the flyers, but I do think it's important to send at least one so that I, I just don't want anybody to be able to come back and say we had no idea you were running a levy. Um, mm -hmm. And that there is some very pertinent information that they need to understand with regard to the facilities bill, um, House Bill 292 in particular, and the property tax relief that that provides that we can't show them on the ballot and then I can make sure people understand so make sure it's on that community tab yeah and anywhere we can yeah, yeah and anywhere we can get it out and yeah. I would say that um maybe we can help design it or something so there's not so much information that there's more white space and just the layout maybe a little bit different. I know we're always trying to cram as much information and maybe even the better thing to do is to do, because you could do a, a double, almost a double sided, triple folded eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. You know, you can get a lot of info on that, but. So my, my plan will be that I, I'll bring a draft uh, to the September board meeting and then you can give me some yeah. uh, input as far as edits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you? Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but um, can you share with us your uh, bullet points so that we have those talking points even before September? Yeah. Like if you have something already, you can just forward it to us because um, I know myself, I don't know if anybody what, already getting questions. I guess the paper had an article about Coeur d'Alene and so everybody now is in levy mode mm -hmm. and they want to know, you know, Blah, blah, blah. So whatever, I'd like to have the same talking points you have. I will sign that your yeah. way. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other update or comments on that levy? No. Oh, man. Okay. Moving on to the last item, which is the summative evaluation form. Good job. I, I, I was going to try really hard to get it all on one page, but. A lot of information to put, yeah. Uh, Even with it consolidated, mm -hmm. yeah. Condensed and consolidated. Looks good. And the IPLP now is, is long just because they put all of the verbiage back in for the reflection on the 22 components, but it's literally just highlighting and then. I took out some of the requirements as far as artifacts and evidence. Um, but. Any further discussion? The only thing I would say is a, the page count, so page 2 of 19. Nobody wants to put page numbers here. 
<laughs> I, but I did put, did I not put, you put there the page are number. page numbers. Yes, yes, okay, yes you did. Just, but you like the, um, well, so they know phone. because if somebody ends up, you know, they don't know how many pages should, what is the complete document? Okay. You know, how many pages? Oh, there they are. They're on the, yeah, they're the other side. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I always, I, I might need to sit down with you, Michelle, because you're really good at that yeah. formatting. I was watching you the other day when you were doing it, and I thought, how does she know how to do that? I struggle to get things to move over where they're supposed to go. And, um, so, um, Well, you know, we wouldn't have these issues if we used it. Word would be <laughs> great. <laughs> Just throwing that out there for anybody um, that do, cares. Do, speaking of, so while I'm sitting with you so you can teach me how to do the footer, do you... Is there a trick to the page to a five? Yeah, it's called it's page format. count. So the first one you put page number is what you want to insert, and then you write the word of, and then you insert page count. Okay. So it'll be one of 19. So there are two different fields. One is page number, and the other is page count. Okay. Insert and page Google's not smart number. enough to figure that out, so you have to put it in there for it. I got the short chair. Short chair. Lift it up. And geez, you want those on all documents. You want it that way. Well, I mean, legally they're supposed to be there. Okay. I just, yeah. Yep, I will do that. I will get good at it. There's no further discussion on these items? No? No. All right. It is 841. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of regular meeting. Amy. Um, so we're not going to have any other discussion for next month. And don't forget to look at your dates because I've jumped ahead. We have to go in the executive. Okay. We do. I know that. Okay. <laughs> I do need a motion to go into an executive session pursuant to Idaho Code 742061B and D. So moved. All right. We need a roll call then. Trustee Jen. Vice Chair Bain. Yes. Chair Thompson. Yes. Trustee Quinn. Yes. Trustee Person. Yes. Quinn. So we are able to go into executive session. We're going to take a <laughs> 10 minute recess. Five, five, five minute recess. Five minute recess. Oh. You use the All right. So we are coming out of executive session. Um, and I will start entertaining motions. Move to approve the crisis plan. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Uh, moving on to personnel, all on your team motions. I would move to approve personnel B and C's resignations. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Other motions? Requested further information on personnel D, right? Mm -hmm. On D and and E, or gave direction. On e. Gave direction on E. What about A? Oh, this is the personnel. Mm-hmm. I make a motion to approve a sheriff deputy until we find a. Full time SRO. Was it on our district safety? Our, yeah. Second. So, just for clarification, we're going to approve an interim SRO until we are able to hire an ADSS. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. D is tabled until further information. Um, no action is taken on D. And a uh, motion on the student. I move to trespass student 8.14.2024 from all schools in the district except Mountain View High School. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. And on that note, we'll go ahead and adjourn tonight's meeting. 1026. Can we see if the